Let me address this claim by the Benimarama government that we have had unprecedented economic growth in the last three, four years. Yes, we have had reasonable rates of growth for 2011, 12, and 13. But why don't we look at the full eight-year record of the Benimarama government? The figures from the Fiji Bureau of Statistics are very, very clear. When the coup took place in 2006, there was an immediate collapse of investor confidence, investments, private sector investments collapsed, building approvals collapsed, and we had pretty well negative economic growth or zero economic growth for four or five years. And that's clear from the table that you have in front of you. In that period, what happened? The Employment and Unemployment Survey report by the Fiji Bureau of Statistics, which has been sitting in government for the last year because they don't want to publish it, showed that formal sector employment between 2005 and 2011 collapsed by 3% while the labor force was growing. In other words, all the young people coming out of school in these years were having great difficulty finding jobs because the economy was not growing. With the economic stagnation, the economy was not granting wage increases. So that, that survey showed that real incomes, in other words, people's money income, adjusted for the cost of living changes as indicated by the Consumer Prices Index, it collapsed by an incredibly large 30%. That has probably been unprecedented in the history of Fiji. And in that period, poverty increased enormously, which I shall talk about elsewhere. Yes, from 2011 onwards, economic growth picked up. But it picked up not on the back of private sector investment, but on the back of public sector investment, and in particular, massive expenditure of $500 million for 2013 and 14 on roads. I remind that when the PWD was in place, they used to get a maximum of about $50, $60 million a year. The Fiji Roads Authority has been given $500 million a year for these two years. When you spend this massive amount of money in two years, of course, the rate of economic growth will go up. And it has gone up to above 3%. But you can also look at the projected rate of growth for 2015 and beyond, which has been given by the Reserve Bank of Fiji and the Bureau of Stats, and it goes back down again to 2.4% when the effect of the infrastructure investment wears off. So the overall performance of this Benimarama government has not been good. And you can see this very clearly when you compare the growth record of all the different governments. On the screen there you see in front of you, you'll see that there is a comparison of the growth rates of the different governments since 1970. And you'll see that the best growth record was that by the Ratumara government from 1970 to 1986, which is 17 years of annual compound growth rate of 3.5%. This was then followed by the growth, economic growth record of the Garasse government between 2001 to 2006, for six years, the growth rate was 2.3% per year. Then there was the Mara Rambuka government. After the 87 coup, for 12 years, it was 2.0%. And last but not least, you've got the Benimarama government, which for the last eight years has had an average growth rate of 1.7% per year, if these projected figures for 2013 and 14 are correct. In that picture also, and off the chart, is the one-year record of the Fiji Labour Party, which grew at more than 8% in 1999, before their governance was caught short by the military coup. So the overall growth record of all these governments for long periods of time indicates that the Benimarama government has not got the best record. In fact, they have got the worst record of all the governments. It's a real tragedy that there are two individuals in this unelected Benimarama government, which has ruled Fiji for eight years without elections. They keep repeating that this is the first government ever to do this, the first government to ever do that. 
They keep talking about the bad old politicians who have brought this country to where we are today. It is a tragedy that our young and inexperienced journalists with no knowledge of Fiji's history do not tell this to individuals. Please, we have had great political leaders in the past and great governments. They have built the Suvanandi Highway. They have built the Monosauva Dam. They have built most of the roads which are being tarsealed today. They built ports in Suva and Lotoka and Nandi. They have built hospitals. They have created, together with the communities, a fantastic education system which was second to none in the Pacific until recently this regime began to dismantle all the good aspects of it. And as for the bad old politicians, what an insult to the memory of our previous generation. You've had great leaders like Rafael Kamesese Mara, who was the Prime Minister for 17 years. You've had great leaders like Adi Patel, like Sadiq Koya, like Jairam Reddy. You've had great ministers like the Tongani brothers, Tongani Walu brothers. And to malign all these old politicians, paint them with some kind of a rotten black brush that these unelected two individuals are doing is nothing short of scandalous. Certainly none of these old prime ministers or ministers ever, ever paid themselves massive salaries which they did not reveal to the public for three years. Certainly none of them withheld Auditor General reports on their handling of government finances which this government has done for seven years. It is a tragedy that these people keep repeating these allegations in order to win votes. I sincerely hope that the voters are there, are wise enough, and they respect their elders enough to say this is not on.